I'm kind of like a cat. I don't like to be wet or cold. So this is my worst enemy right now. What do you think? I'm just focusing on counting and breathing. It's already light years easier because I feel like my mind was already prepared. So like the biggest reason I want to do this is for mental strength and toughness and to realize that I can very easily do hard things and like we're just capable of so much more than we realize. Okay you guys, it is cold plunge time. So Aaron and I have been doing this for a couple of weeks now. I've been wanting to do it for a couple of years. So I follow people like Wim Hof, Andrew Huberman, who talk non-stop about cold plunges, cold therapy, and how it's good for physical and more importantly, mental health. So I took the plunge literally, and I figured out how to make my old cold plunge for not $5,000 like you'll find online, but for 500 and it works just the same. So I'm gonna walk you guys through that today, and we're gonna talk a little bit about why cold therapy is good for you and we think essential now. If you follow us on Instagram, then you've probably popped into our DMs asking us, what are you guys doing in a deep freezer? <laughs> so cold therapy, deliberate cold exposure, ice baths, cold plunges, what have you. We have been obsessed as of late for a multitude of reasons. So we're gonna share with you first and foremost why we have been doing cold therapy. Second, we'll be diving into the physical, mental, and emotional benefits. Third, we'll be talking about how you, as a beginner, can get started with some simple tips and tricks. You don't need any equipment. You don't need to spend even a dollar. But if you're interested in it, then we will actually be sharing how we made our own cold plunge for pennies on the dollar compared to these pricey ones that you'll be seeing online. Let's jump right into it. No pun intended. The first question most people have is, why on earth would you be putting yourself into freezing cold water. This was the question I was asking a couple years ago when, like Aaron said, I first stumbled upon Wim Hof. I heard him on the Ritual podcast and about 30 other podcasts before I decided I'm going to do some research and figure out what the heck this guy's doing and why. So as Aaron mentioned, there are mental, physical, and emotional benefits to this. So for me, it was about mental toughness okay so there's something that andrew huberman talks about called limbic friction this is about exposure therapy basically your brain doesn't want to do certain things but we have the choice to do those anyway which indeed makes us mentally tough and that's what i want that's what we all need we live in such a posh easy life all of us here in the first world that we sometimes actually need to be challenging ourselves on a daily basis and that's what i want to do not just with workouts not just with a healthy diet and work schedule etc but now yes with things like cold plunges it really truly works and we'll tell you why so good things are often good for you for more than one reason and cold therapy is no exception. Number one, it increases your body's brown fat, which is essentially your body's internal furnace. It helps with resilience to cold and it's the good type of fat. On that note, it also burns the bad fat, it reduces inflammation, it can boost your immune system, increase your energy, speed up your metabolism, and can combat depression, stress, and anxiety. Finally, it can elevate your endorphins in the same way that a good sweat session can. It can boost your dopamine and it can also increase your adrenaline in a good way. So this is a very invigorating, energizing practice to incorporate into your day. So we are by no means pros. We are very much beginners ourselves. But if you are just starting out some tips, number one, start low and slow, maybe a cold shower, just 30 seconds at the end of your shower, turn it to cold and just see how you respond. The key is to regulate your breathing. So if you're doing showers or if you're getting in the cold plunge, breath is necessary. Deep belly breathing pushes up on the diaphragm, slows the heart rate, and it's just gonna keep you stable throughout your cold exposure. So the first time I wanted to actually try the cold therapy, I went to the bathtub and put it on all cold, and I sat in it for like five minutes. I was so impressed. We actually got a whole bunch of friends together, cut a hole in the ice out at Aaron's family's lake, and got into the freezing cold water. Now, that can be dangerous. We don't recommend that. 
because 30 degree water can actually stop your heart. People like Andrew Huberman, who does all the science, says it's not as much about the temperature of the water as it is being uncomfortable. If you are uncomfortable and doing it anyway, you are reaping benefits. So when do you do these cold plunges? We say do it early in the day, preferably before your workout, because you're gonna get, like Aaron said, that dopamine boost, those endorphins, and you want that all day long because this will pump you up. So I wouldn't do it before bed, and like I mentioned, you don't want to do it after a workout. Some studies say that because of this vasoconstricting effect, it can inhibit muscle growth. You want your blood to be pumping after a workout to deliver nutrients and everything else you need to recover. So we say do it early in the morning and before workout. Studies show that 11 minutes of cold exposure therapy per week makes you more resilient, increases your brown fat like Aaron mentioned. So that's just a couple minutes a day. Again, going back to Andrew Huberman, Huberman Labs, he's got an Instagram and an amazing YouTube channel podcast you have to check out. He recommends two to three minutes of cold exposure therapy a few times a week. So sitting in the tub for 11 minutes isn't necessarily as good as just two or three minutes at a time. Again, like I said before, don't feel like you have to do it in 40 degree weather. Again, the key is to be uncomfortable. So if 60 degree water is uncomfortable for you, that works. Again, you'll find like Aaron and I have that we can continue to work our way down. The more you do it, the more resilient you become, the stronger you get, the colder you can go. Experiment with yourself. A little bit less time in really cold water has certain effects, while a little bit longer in warmer water has its own beneficial effects. They're all good. The main thing is getting started. Last beginner tip is to let yourself warm up naturally for maximum benefit after you get out of the cold plunge. Ideally, you'd be able to sit in the sunshine if it's warm out wherever you're at. Towel off, do whatever you have to do, but avoid a hot shower right afterwards. We're gonna go pop our swimsuits on and we're gonna show you our DIY cold plunge. Dusty and I have both been talking about how each time we do it, it doesn't get easier. It actually gets harder to want to get in the cold just because you know what's coming. It's kind of like childbirth in that way. It's not going to be any easier and I'm not excited for this even though I've done it before. That being said, I think I'm feeling a little bit more geared up this time. So maybe I'm onto something here. their heads in sometimes. Yeah, I think people dunk their head. We watched that Netflix documentary about that girl that swims under the water. She swam like 300 feet under the ice. So like I keep moving and like opening my hands because if any part of, of your body is touching or if your fists are clenched, they will be warm. So I keep like moving my feet Shaking my legs, moving my hands to get cold in every crack and crevice. Don't cheat yourself. Once you're in here, go for it. Go all in. And now I'm at two minutes, and I feel like I could be in here for a day. It's like to that point. So I'll probably do like three, maybe five minutes. The water's about 50 degrees today. We've tried it at 60. We've tried it at 40. 50 is a little more doable, and I'd rather spend a few minutes in here and learn to breathe and focus and relax because that seems like it's better for me than a fast 40 degree section session. So again, listening to Wim Hof, Andrew Huberman, these guys talk about the benefits at the different temperatures and even at 60 degrees, like you're benefiting. Okay. I follow so many guys that do this for stress, anxiety, even to fix depression symptoms. So. This is what I'm all about, figuring out how to be our strongest physically, but also mentally. So now I'm just gonna real quick show you how easy it is to make your own cold plunge. So if you go online and you search cold plunge, you will find a very similar item that costs $5,000. 
I made mine for 500 and this is how. You literally only need a handful of supplies. One, you need a deep freezer. I bought this on Best Buy for 500 bucks. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them locally. I will link everything that I purchased below. I also then hopped on Amazon and I ordered a Wi-Fi controlled plug-in. Now, someone has just recently sent me a temperature controlled switch. So basically you put the thermometer in the water and you can set it to the right temperature. Right now, I'm regulating the temperature with this Wi-Fi switch on my phone. So I turn it on when it needs to be cold Older, and I turn it off when I feel like it's at the right temp. I'll link both of those things below because we have kids especially. I ordered some locks on Amazon. Then I went to Home Depot and I bought two things, a thermometer and some silicone caulking. So buy some really heavy duty, really nice silicone because you don't want this thing to leak. If it leaks, you could ruin it. Then I very simply caulked all the corners, all the seams, just to make sure this thing is watertight. So I let that sit to cure for about 24 hours and then basically filled it up with water. Now the kids have this little step stool that they use to wash their hands in the bathroom and I stole one of them for our cold plunge so I can more easily get in. I turned this bad boy on for about 48 hours to get it from 70 down to about 50 degrees and then Aaron and I went for our first cold plunge. Now you don't want to fill this up too much because you'll find like we did the first time we did it, it will overflow. So I had to take a little bit of water out to make sure it doesn't overflow. The most important thing you guys, I have a lot of people ask, is this safe? I've watched other videos, I've read other people, I've asked friends who have done this for years. The main thing is unplugging the tub or the cooler before you get in. Now, you don't want it to overflow onto the plug. Again, we have GFCI switches, but the main thing is unplug the cold plunge, even from the switch. Even if the Wi-Fi switch is turned off, I still unplug it just to be extra safe and not accidentally electrocute myself. So unplug the tub. We've actually had it unplugged for a few days now because it's stayed really nice and cold on its own. But just remember, unplug the tub before you get in. Two other things are Epsom salt and hydrogen peroxide. So the hydrogen peroxide, I put a little bit in every few days just to keep the water clean. And the Epsom salt, because magnesium is so good for you, you might as well be getting your magnesium salt bath while you do the cold plunge. You guys, this has been so much fun. Challenging, but definitely fun. We're reaping the benefits, not just physically, but mentally for sure. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below if you have any questions or tips for us. Much love you guys. Stay tuned for next week's video. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.